What is up guys? It's your boy, Boo Kakis Gotcha, and today we are going to be showcasing everything you need to know about the Festival of the Lost 2024 Halloween event that has just gone live within Destiny 2. Talking about exactly how this event works and how to farm the absolute crap out of everything you need so you can get that sweet new loot. And so, let's get started. But really quick, I do want to mention that in celebration of this event, Bungie created this sick new emblem and made it a Twitch drop. So you can earn this by subscribing or gifting a sub to your favorite Destiny 2 streamer. And what do you know, I'm going to be live on Twitch as soon as this video goes out. So definitely, if you want to earn that emblem, that's how you do it. Now, in terms of this event, the first thing you need to do is head down to the tower and talk to Eva Levante. She's going to give you an introductory quest for Festival of the Lost. And right off the bat, as you can see, she will give you your Masquerader's Helm. This is super important. It goes to your helmet slot and you want to be wearing it for the entire duration of this event. And that's because some of the important resources like candy, which we'll talk about later, only drop when you have this helmet on, when you're wearing your Halloween mask. You can also go and inspect the appearance section and put on a bunch of different mask options, whatever you're vibing with. After that, you're going to have to do a Haunted Lost Sector. This is the key activity of this event and it's going to be your main source for festival rewards. Now, there's two different options when it comes to Haunted Lost Sectors. The first one is going to be the playlist version that has matchmaking, it actually has heavyweight active right now, which is crazy, as well as one negative modifier. Then you have expert haunted lost sectors. These do not have matchmaking actually. They do have a bunch of surges active, as well as you do have champions. And what champion it is depends on the haunted lost sector. Remember, they're actually gonna rotate about every hour or so. So like for an hour, you're gonna have, let's say unstoppable. And then the next hour you might have barrier and it will continue to rotate. Now, on top of that, you do have to have a little bit of a higher light level, but that's about it. They're gonna be a bit more rewarding, but again, you're gonna have to decide, especially based on whether you need matchmaking or not, what one you want to enter. But once you're in there, they're gonna function identically. Here's how Haunted Lost Sectors work. You simply need to head further into the Lost Sector. You can actually skip all of the initial ads near the spawn. And then you're going to start to see objectives spawn around the Lost Sector. You need to capture these objectives that will spawn the Headless One bosses. You kill those guys, they're gonna drop a bunch of candy. And then after you've killed 10 Headless One bosses or after your timer expires, then another boss is going to spawn and you're gonna damage that boss until the halfway point. They're gonna become immune and then more zones are going to appear. You need to spawn headless ones, kill them, grab the pumpkins to throw at the boss and destroy the immunity shield. Right off the bat, I have a huge tip here involving that boss killing section because your rewards are actually based on how many headless ones you kill. So the maximum is actually 13. 10 to spawn the boss, and then the three more that spawn when you have the boss immunity shield. Now, importantly, you actually don't need all three amounts of pumpkins to destroy the immunity shield. You can kill literally one headless one and you'll get the amount of pumpkins you need to destroy the shield and then you can just go on to kill the boss. But if you want better rewards, you can actually wait on the boss, don't throw the pumpkins, kill all three of those additional headless ones. And again, that's just gonna influence how much gear and loot you actually get at the end of this activity. So really when it comes to doing these fast, it's just killing those headless ones as fast as possible. So the first thing that comes in mind in terms of build crafting is gonna be a Consecration Titan. If you have one of those, they are fantastic for farming the crap out of these activities. But if you're on Warlock, you know, you can go the full ad clear direction with the Rhymeheart Raiments, uh, the brand new uh, chest piece that's going to boost up your stasis turret. And that's just going to be fantastic at slowing everything around because you do have to mine the ads on top of the headless ones. Or you can just go the traditional solar route and put on the sun bracers to absolutely pop off and throw grenades everywhere. Now, if you're on the Hunter, Ascension, especially with 
uh, the exotic gifted conviction chess piece is going to be nuts, especially in a small loss sector. You're going to hit pretty much everything when you ascend. And on top of that, you could just go with the melee build based around a uh, spirit of the liar, spirit of Caliban. Like if you have a good relativism, it's going to be cracked with combination blow in there. Um, but you can also really just do most of this with weapons. And the key one is going to be heavy grenade launchers. If you have a good edge transit or chill inhibitor or any good heavy grenade launcher especially combined with the seasonal artifact perk that causes them to weaken targets the headless ones count as bosses so one single shot from any grenade launcher will weaken them and well a bunch of follow-up shots with your heavy grenade launcher will kill them super fast or you can weaken with something like the brand new uh, seasonal grenade launcher and then follow up with a big consecration or choir of one using hip fire mode absolutely slaps or even the legend of acrius is going to do a ton of damage how about a super powerful sword to boot guys really it's super easy with grenade launchers i should mention area denial frame grenade launchers especially you can throw it down even before the boss spawns and it will spawn into that damage weaken and then again a quick consecration or whatever the heck else you're using will absolutely destroy those guys just keep in mind guys that a lot of good builds like the speaker's sight solar warlock or any build that requires an exotic helmet just became irrelevant because you need that helmet slot for your mask remember but guys when you do beat these haunted lost sectors you're actually going to get pretty much everything you need for this event as end rewards like you're going to get a bunch of the festival of the lost weapons outright including the brand new shotgun the first ever heavy burst shotgun in the game already did a video on that definitely check it out it's pretty crazy on top of that guys you're going to actually get additional mask drops and the stats you get are actually super high like i was getting 67 66 spiky drops of these helmets so just keep that in mind that's actually kind of crazy but also you're gonna get a bunch of candy and then manifest pages and then eerie engrams those three things are kind of the new special currencies for this event so eerie engrams are going to turn into festival weapons and you need a bunch of candy that you're going to get from killing enemies in any activity or beating any activity in the game with your mask on so one eerie engram combined with candy as you can see can focus certain weapons then as for the manifest pages just a quick tip here guys don't back out of these uh, haunted lost sectors too early you actually need to wait around until the dialogue is finished for the final screen to pop up before you get your manifest pages as you can see those will actually unlock a bunch of pages of this book that's in the tower doing so will give you lore entries and importantly it will help you complete challenges in your event card which will give you additional rewards so here we reach the bottleneck of this event because to get the rewards you want you need enough eerie engrams and especially you need a lot of candy to focus those eerie engrams so a massive tip right off the bat to get a bunch of easy candy is climb the trees now that sounds a bit weird but as you can see right here right next to eva levante if you actually go in the tree branches and ascend this spooky looking tree there's candy waiting for you on the journey up and at the very top you actually get 250 candy now on top of that you can head to the other side of the tower right next to ikora there's another spooky tree that has a bunch of candy in it as well so combined you're getting like over 500 i think around 700 candy or something like that for climbing these trees maybe even more and you can actually do this on all of your characters so all three characters can get all of the candy within these trees guys now on top of that you have some ways to specifically farm candy so you can go to the first contact mission you can get the checkpoint right after killing the tormentor when you're kind of uh, in this area right here before you go down in the drop pods again if you save that checkpoint you can constantly load in right here go down in the drop pods and get rewards and just do it again and again and again you will get 40 candy you can see i went from i think it was 603 to 643 candy 
for doing this. And you can do this pretty efficiently, but even better than that, guys, if you get a final boss checkpoint for the Shattered Throne dungeon in the Dreaming City. And remember, you don't have to beat the entire dungeon to get to that point. You can simply uh, use a checkpoint bot on one of the many Destiny 2 checkpoint saving websites. Uh, as you can see right here, you quickly beat these guys, you kill the boss, simply use the Wordcliff Coil to melt the boss super easily, and you will get 160 candy and manifest pages every time you do this. So this is incredibly efficient to specifically farm candy. Keep in mind, however, you know, you are gonna also need eerie engrams, and if you're going after the weapons, well, you get the weapons outright from Haunted Lost Sectors. So for most people, the Haunted Lost Sectors are gonna just be the thing to farm. If you can uh, get that farm done efficiently, if you can find a team for expert, right, and you're killing all 13 of those headless ones, you're gonna get a ton of Festival of the Lost loot, and you will just naturally farm candy that way. However, especially later in this event, if you no longer care about the weapons, let's say you got the god rolls you needed, the thing that people are really going to be interested in is the exotic class items. This is really the other massive, massive thing in this event because, and this is so important guys, like literally tell all of your friends who haven't done this yet, if you're someone who owns the final shape but has not beaten the dual destiny exotic mission, which is a two player, pretty challenging exotic mission to initially earn those exotic class items, you can actually buy the exotic class items from Eva Levante and you officially unlock them on your character. You're then gonna be able to buy them from Xur. You can get them from Overthrow within the Pale Heart. So you can completely bypass that dual destiny exotic mission by simply going and buying them from Eva Levante. So that is huge for everyone out there who is unable to beat dual destiny. Now, if you are able to beat Dual Destiny, well, things are actually even juicier, arguably, because you will unlock the ability to attune your exotic perks for your exotic class items. So as you can see right here, I can pick what particular perk I want to attune. Now, normally, this just increases the chances to get that particular perk. But specifically, with the class items you focus for Eva Levante, Bungie actually made it so it's a 100% chance to get whatever you focused. So you can see here, I focus a uh, heart of inmost light, spirit of inmost light for the warlock. I kind of want a spirit plus verity roll. I go and I get my exotic class item. Now you will need again a lot of candy, so that's when that farm uh, comes into play. But when I do, I get spirit of inmost light. So I'm gonna get that literally every single time, 100% of the time. So if you are someone who is missing like one or two rolls that you're going after for these class items, like this is literally the best time ever to farm for them because we've never had something that like guarantees 50% of your god roll. So that is really, really, really good when it comes to farming. And so guys, that's it for the video. Honestly, it is a pretty juicy event. Like the quality of the rewards, especially if you're including the exotic class items are incredibly valuable for a lot of people out there. It's just that farming haunted lost sectors day in and day out may get a little tiring, but it is what it is. That's it for the video. Again, hope you guys enjoyed and found this informative. If you did, please remember to help me out by simply rating and especially sharing the video. If you guys want to see more Destiny 2 content similar to this, don't be afraid to slap that subscribe button. If you want to get in touch with me and keep up to date with the latest channel activity, the best way is to follow me on Twitter at Rick Kakis that is linked in the description down below. Again, I hope you enjoyed the video and as always, have a good day.